Welcome to my YouTube channel Modi Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. In this video, I would like to explain about objective questions and answers onto a metal casting processes. So here that will be the part number 4 containing with a top 20 questions that will be helped to clear GATT, UPSC, GPSC and all kind of government competitive examinations. So let us start with our question number 1. What does LEV stands for? Option A Local Exhaust Ventilation Option B Limited Entry Ventilation Option C Local Entry Ventilation and Option D Limited Exhaust Ventilations So in case of the casting process basically LEV that will be stands for Local Exhaust Ventilation Systems so basically this system has a ventilation placed in a downward direction with a turn table to help manipulate the castings. So basically LEV stands for local exhaust ventilations. So right answer is option A. Then which of the following would not be counted among the foundry dust? Option A. Bentonite, option B, silica, option C, iron and option D, C coal. So basically among the following bentonite, silica and C coal are the materials from which a considerable amount of dust is being found to remain into the foundries. So iron is not a part of it. So the right answer is C, iron. That is not considering as a part of foundry dust. Then what will happen if continuously fine sands are removed from the molding mixture? Option A. Brittleness. Option B. Poor finish. Option C. Less elasticity. And option D. More ductility. So basically for controlling the sands, if the fine sands which is added in the molding sand is removed continuously, it may cause the casting to be formed with a poor finish than desired. So the right answer is option B, poor finishing. Then how does pattern vary in size with castings? Option A, pattern is larger in size. Option B, Casting is larger in size. Option C, both having the same size. And option D, size depends on other factors. So basically, in case of the patterns, generally that will be the replica of the desired shapes. But as from the design concerns, a pattern is slightly larger in size as compared to the castings. Because that will be the some allowance that will be providing onto the patterns. So right answer is option A. Pattern is always larger than the size. Then a pattern carries which allowance for internal and external surfaces. Option A. Shrinkage allowance. Option B. Machining allowance. Option C distortion allowance and option D draft allowance. So basically draft allowance that is uh, known by the name of the tapering allowance as the diameter of the cast goes on increasing in a trapezoidal shape from the bottom. So a pattern has a draft allowance of an order of 1 and 3 degrees for externals and internal surface respectively. So Option D, draft allowance. Then, what is draft allowance also known as? Option A, sake allowance. Option B, contraction allowance. Option C, taper allowance. And option D, wrapping allowance. So, as we already discussing that, draft allowance also known as a taper allowance. So, option C. Then, Machining allowance does not depends on which of the following factor. Option A, solidifying contraction. Option B, 
machining method option c shape and size of castings option d casting method so basically the machining allowance does not depends on to the solidifying contractions as it is the one of the form of the shrinkage allowance but machining allowance depends on to the remaining other factors so right answer is option a then how much does the distortion allowance vary option a 1 mm to 10 mm option b 2 mm to 20 mm option c 1 mm to 15 mm and option d 2 mm to 15 mm so basically in case of the distortion allowance generally it goes varies from the 2 mm to 20 mm so option b then shrinkage allowance does not depends on which of the following factors option a molding method option b casting dimensions option c amount of finish required and option d pouring temperatures so basically in case of the shrinkage allowances that does not depends on to the amount of the finish required so basically the amount of finish that needed on to the machining portions is a factor on which machining allowance depends so shrinkage allowance depends on all the other remaining factors so the right answer is option c amount of finish required because that will be does not depends right then a pattern is second by striking it with a wooden piece a negative allowance is provided for this so which allowance is it option a machining allowance option b sake allowance option c distortion allowance and option d shrinkage allowance so basically in wrapping or you can say sake allowance the pattern is taken out of the mold and it is wrapped or can say sack second so as to free it from the adjoining sense so due to this there may be a little increase into the size of the mold cavity so that will be enlarging the dimensions also you can see that so that will be sack allowances then for casting operation a metal must be heated to what temperature option a above solidifying temperature option b above vaporizing temperature option c above melting temperature and option d above room temperature so basically for casting operations the metal to be casted must be heated above the melting temperature so basically melting temperature that will be representing as a temperature at which solid phase that will be converting into the liquid phase for any castings you should make a liquid phase of the metals so that will be in the form of molten metal so that will be requirement above the melting temperature so option c which of the following is not a furnace used for heating option a cupola furnace option b crucible furnace option c electric arc furnace and option d blow air furnace so basically among the following the blow air furnace is not a type of the furnace which is used for heating purpose whereas for cupola crucible and electric arc that are the furnace which will be used regularly for heating so right answer is blow air furnace that is not a furnace used for heating heat required to raise the temperature to the melting point is called what option a sensible heat option b latent heat option c calorific heat and option d specific heat so basically that heat requires that will be known to be a sensible heat to the melting point when there is a change of the state of the materials keeping the temperature constant so that heat is called as a latent heat but right now the question is like uh, heat required to raise the temperature to the melting point so that would be known as a sensible heat option a then 
when the molten metal is put into the mold what is that temperature called option a melting temperature option b vaporizing temperature option c pouring temperature and option d room temperature so basically for a molten metal to able to pour the temperature which it is required to process is called as a pouring temperatures so basically this temperature is higher than the melting temperature because it will be need to into the molten form of the metal so that will be above the melting points so that will be known as a pouring temperature what is the shape of sprue option a cuboidal option b cubical trapezoidal and option d spherical so sprue is essentially tapered give it to the trapezoidal look so that will be easily the molten metal that will be transferred to the cavity so basically it needs to be tapered because the inverse relations between area and velocity also option c then in pressure die castings what is the minimum pressure that can be applied 50 kg per centimeter square option b 60 kg per centimeter square option c 70 kg per centimeter square and option d 80 kg per centimeter square so in case of the pressure die castings basically the pressure requires that will be around or you can say 70 kg per centimeter square below this pressure at 50 or 60 kg per centimeter square the process of casting will not be take place then next question alloys of which of the following metal is not used for hot chamber die casting option a tin option b lead option c zinc and option d iron so basically among the following metals the alloys which are made up of iron are least manufactured by using hot chamber die casting method while rest of the others that will be having a wide applications so that would be used to make with the help of hot chamber die casting process but the question is like metal is not used for hot chamber so that will be the iron the next in hot chamber die casting before the end of the stroke what uncovers the part option a injector option b plunger option c burning flame and option d die cavity so basically in case of hot chamber die castings as soon as the stroke ends there has to some part which would remove to cover over the pot so basically the plunger that uncovers the pot so in case of hot chamber die castings before the end of the stroke that will be the plunger that uncovers the pot so option b the next which of the following is not counted among the limitations of pressure die castings option a only small parts can be produced option b high cost option c low scale production and option d castings are porous so basically in case of the pressure die castings is used for a mass productions the reason behind that the equipments needed in pressure die casting is not available at low cost so the die casting used in this process to are very expensive so basically that will be not counted among the limitations so that will be low production scale then what is the maximum pressure which can be applied in pressure die casting option a 4530 kg per centimeter square option b 4980 kg per centimeter square 
ऑप्शन सी 5000 केजी पर सेंटीमीटर स्क्वायर एंड ऑप्शन डी 5100 केजी पर सेंटीमीटर स्क्वायर सो बेसिकली द मैक्सिमम प्रेशर दैट विल बी 5000 केजी पर सेंटीमीटर स्क्वायर फॉर सम कास्टिंग्स विथ लेसर हार्डनेस द मैक्सिमम प्रेशर लिमिट इज लेसर इफ द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ प्रेशर अप्लाइड एक्सीड the value of 5000 kg per centimeter square so option c so i hope you understand all that questions if you like this then subscribe and share more the mechanical engineering tutorials thank you so much and keep watching